Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of The Link Up with Letitia. Happy New Year. It is 2020. It is a new year. It's a new decade. So I hope that everyone listening right now is uh, extremely excited about the new year. I know things have been kind of crazy, crazy, uh, but you know, still a lot of positive things to look forward to in this new year. I always love new years because it signifies a fresh start, you know, a fresh start to, you know, set new goals, uh, set new resolutions, set new habits. My theme for the year that literally came to me yesterday, and, and I'm, I usually get my, you know, themes for the year uh, fairly sooner, but for some reason, I was really struggling with what I wanted to focus on this year. Uh, so my theme this year is discipline. I have... Uh, my well, my my themes last year had three. It was alignment, discernment, and oh man, I don't remember the other one right now. Probably like manif- manifestation. Uh, and again, like being intentional about having a theme, it those those things all uh, made to be true for me in uh, 2019. I have exceeded my business revenue goals, um, you know, closing well over six figures. And so this year, you know, my goal is six figures, which, you know, as an entrepreneur, honestly, like that's really not a ton of money, especially when you have other people that you need to pay and you're wanting to reinvest the funds back into your business to scale and, and things of that nature. And so I significantly exceeded exceeded uh, those goals. And so my goal for this year is to hit a quarter mil. And I had to do some self-reflection here. I'm very proud of, you know, my progress for the year. But, you know, I, I asked myself, man, had I not set my goal low, you know, maybe if I had really believed in myself, just think at you know, how much more I could have made, how much more I could have done. Uh, You know, there was a tweet that went around about, you know, saying six figures should not be the, you know, definition of success for an entrepreneur. And unfortunately, if you're someone like myself who grew up in a a troubled (laughs) household with a single parent and, you know, living check to check barely and and all of that like money is an indicator of success for you know I mean it's important you know you need money to survive you need money to pay your bills and have a certain quality of life but it should not be what the number one in my opinion not your number one you know uh definition or indication of whatever success looks like for you but uh anyways saying all that to say that my theme for the year is discipline so that's what I'm focusing on: discipline, uh, being more, having more structure in my in my schedule as an entrepreneur. We, it's a good thing and a bad thing. People ask me like, "What is what is the best thing about entrepreneurship?" Well, the great thing about entrepreneurship is that you know you can do whatever the hell you want, and that's also the hardest thing <laughs> because you have to be really strict in, in how you manage your schedule and your time and your energy. So I want to focus on discipline. Making sure I am building and implementing and incorporating the right habits, making sure that I have a structure throughout my week, making sure that I'm planning, that I am prepared, over-prepared, over-communicating, which we'll talk about a little bit in this episode, over-communicating with my clients, with my team, being fully present, disciplined with the gym, you know, just discipline. Because discipline will keep you going even when you don't feel motivated. Discipline are those habits that will keep you pushing when you emotionally feel, you know, drained. Or when you, you know, it will give you that extra kick and that extra push and to continue that momentum. So I don't know why I just 
started talking about that, <laughs> but that's my theme for the year. So I uh, just enrolled new coaching clients for Q1. Super excited to work with them and have some other things, exciting things that I'm working on for 2020. Definitely more master classes. If you were on any of my master classes last year, I did, uh, hmm, how many did I do? I think I did two. I did one on salary negotiation. Uh, it's just still up on my website, latishabird.com slash shop. Uh, $30 for a salary negotiation course, um, discount code, get the coins. I've had people that have said, Hey, I've gotten a 12 K raise. I've gotten a 22 K salary increase based on this course. So check it out. Um, I did another masterclass, uh, back in December on how to launch your successful, how to launch a successful job search strategy for 2020. Uh, one of my goals this year is to be releasing many, many, many more masterclasses. So stay tuned. I will be doing one uh, sometime this month, maybe February on um, LinkedIn. How do you utilize LinkedIn to really get after these opportunities, whether it is building your network, building a brand, um, getting connected to job opportunities. Uh, getting clients, you know, so I'll be speaking from how an entrepreneur, how a job seeker, anyone can use LinkedIn uh, for their benefits. So that's going to be rolling out soon as well as some other exciting things. So I will keep you all posted on that. But for today's topic, this is my first um, Link Up with Letitia episode of 2020. And I tweeted something um, earlier that honestly just kind of took off and the tweet said, if you like your job, focus on developing relationships with your boss and coworkers in 2020. I hate to break it to you, relationships at work do matter. Quality of your work is important, but quality of relationships matter more. Don't ever think you get ahead on your work alone. So that's a pretty long tweet. I don't know how I fit all of that into <laughs> like 120, 140 characters. But uh, this was important because this is your opportunity right now at the beginning of the year to really level set expectations on, you know, maybe what you are expecting from your employer and what your employer is expecting from you. This is your time to also level set expectations in terms of those relationships that you have at work. You can turn it around. Maybe you don't have a great relationship with your boss. Maybe you don't have a great relationship with your coworker. This is the perfect time, just given that everyone is back from the holiday break, people are feeling refreshed, you know, in good spirits, you know, hopefully energized and, you know, all of that. So use this to your advantage. And I want you all to really think about the temperature of your relationships or rate your relationships on a scale from one to 10, you know, how, what is the strength of that relationship? Think about that. We cannot get ahead at work on the quality of our work alone. I wish that were the case. And the challenging part, because this is a living corporate, and I know, you know, most of our listeners are um, people of color. We cannot just get ahead by just doing our work and keeping our heads down, unfortunately. Statistics show that You know, people of color, especially women, uh, have a much harder time getting promoted to leadership. We have a harder time getting raises. We have a harder time getting acknowledged for the work that we're doing. So this goes back to those relationships. The other reason why I think this is important is because if we don't have relationships, we are already going to be misinterpreted and misunderstood. I may have shared this example on one earlier episode where um, I was working on something with a coworker. Uh, we will just call her, uh, uh, hmm, what, what can we call her? Let's call her Mary. <laughs> That's my grandma's name, Mary. So 
Mary and I were working on something together and to be quite honest, Mary wasn't pulling her weight. I emailed Mary, crickets, emailed Mary again, crickets. And I was cool, I was like, hey Mary, do you wanna meet and talk about this? Or, hey Mary, you know, can we get some time to kind of work on this together? Mind you, I could have gotten this done by myself, but there was like, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this in corporate as a black woman, but it's like, well, we can't just give this to, you know, Letitia. We got to make sure we have somebody else just to let that person, you know, get the credit or let that person. Because it's like, there's like this, I don't know, it was weird. Like, do you guys not trust me to do it on my own? Do you want to make sure I have a babysitter? Like, anyways, which I ended up doing it on my own. That's a whole different story. So anyways, <laughs> Mary and I were working on this thing together, supposedly, and I had a one-on-one -on -one with my manager and I said, look, I am trying to get with Mary and Mary is just like not responding at all. So my manager says, okay, well, why don't you just go talk to her in person? I'm like, bet, no problem. So um, I think this was like the same day. I saw Mary in the break room and I said, Hey, Mary, how's it going? You know, blah, 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 small talk. Hey, by the way, um, I was wondering if, you know, we or how it was going with the projects. You know, I was thinking maybe we could catch up about it. Like, I was being really nice. Like, I literally was just like, hey, you know, do you have any updates about it? I promise y'all, like, I had zero attitude. I didn't have a mean tone. Like, the way she responded to me, it threw me off because she seemed very defensive. She seemed to be very, and I was, it literally confused me because I'm like, where is this, you know, aggressive? Like, where is that coming from? She would just kind of like rolled her eyes and was just like, oh, yeah, you know, like I'm getting to it and, you know, I got it. And I was like, I literally looked at her and I was like, oh, okay, cool, you know? And that was it. I honestly was like so perplexed by the whole interaction. So I go back down to my desk. That was the end of our conversation. 10 minutes later, she's like stumping. Like I literally hear her stumping down the hall. And she goes to my manager's office and she closes the door. So then she leaves. And I mean, I sit, I was sitting like right outside of my manager's office. My back was turned. So, um, I mean, she didn't say anything to me at all. Like she just went straight to him. So anyways, um, my manager calls me into his office, like after she leaves and he's like, Hey, you know, Meredith said that she kind of had a bad attitude with her when you talk to her in, in, in the break room. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> if y'all could have seen the look on my face, I was so confused. And what I realized in that moment was that Mary, she did not know me. I don't know if she had many interactions with black women before. I'm going to assume maybe not. And trust, like if I have an attitude, oh, you will know it and I know it too. But um, I did not in that moment. And I know for sure that I didn't. But I realized that she did not know me. And I think that sometimes the assumption is that, you know, black women are right aggressive or, you know, we just always have to be really mindful of our tone and level and, you know, how we are enunciating certain words and just things of that nature. It's, it's, it literally can be exhausting, ladies. And I, and I understand that. But what I realized is that um, we did not have a relationship and in order for us to be able to get that project done. Uh, we needed to build that relationship. All of this goes back to me implying that it is easy for us to be misunderstood at work. That's why it is important to build these relationships. Um, and I have a few tips on how to do just that. And so honestly, from that point forward, Mary and I started going to lunch. We started going to lunch, you know, I think maybe on a monthly basis. We started working together more. And, you know, as time went on, we ended up developing a really solid relationship. Um, the other reason why it is important to have these relationships is because you need to be strategic about who you are sharing 
what you're working on with. You need to be strategic about your, your wins, your accomplishments, your goals. So, cause you, people are talking about you when you're not in the room. You know, one of my favorite quotes about branding from Jeff Bezos is, you know, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Your brand precedes you, right? So your brand will speak for you when you're not able to speak for yourself. That's why it is important to have these relationships. So I have, let's see, seven, seven tips here on how to build relationships. I know that it is hard for people of color to build relationships when you already feel like you are misunderstood anyways, and you don't want to feel like you're having to change who you are um, to just fit in. And I, and I really hope that you guys are not doing that. I know it's, 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 it's easier said than done. Uh, but I really hope that you are able to be who you are at work and let people see you for that. I, I, it can be literally exhausting to try to be a different person at work, uh, you know, versus how you are at home. So the first tip that I have is Working on your people skills, man. I'm so serious. Working on your people skills. <laughs> Understand how to communicate with people and like speak to people in the morning when you come in. You have to have people skills. I know that sounds very simple, but there's a lot of us out here that we just we just don't have it. So um, you know, I would challenge you to start speaking to coworkers in the morning. Saying a simple good morning goes a long way. When you leave, saying, hey, have a good evening, that goes a long way too. You know, I think sometimes we are so withholding of information. I'm not saying you need to tell them your personal business, like, hey, I'm leaving, I have a date, or I'm leaving, I'm don't going to this happy hour, I'm going on, you know, this trip or doing this with the boys or with the ladies. Like, you don't have to say all that. But it's literally just having manners. So think about that, growing your people skills um, and actually communicating with folks. <laughs> Number two, identify what relationships you need to manage better and be very observant as to the types of people and co or the coworkers that you have. Who are the high performers on your team? You need to be in the winner's circle. I know you may not like, you know, certain folks because maybe they are always talking in meetings, you know. They're always that one getting all the recognition, right? There is something about that person that people leadership maybe trust there is something about them that they are doing well if they're being recognized or if they are feeling more comfortable to just speak up that might be a good person for you to build a relationship with so observe closely understand the nature of the relationships at work who are the people that have the authority even the folks without the titles right like who are those people that have authority that know what's really, really going on within the team. Those are the type of people that you do want to make sure that you are um, building those relationships with. I know when I was in corporate, there was one person on my team who she was most definitely the high performer. She was always the one with the fresh ideas. And, you know, she was always, you know, that go-to person for literally everyone on the team. And it was annoying. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys have experienced that before, but those types of people can be a little annoying because they're like the know-it-alls. And I really had to take a step back and ask myself, like, what is she doing that I am not doing? And that took me letting my pride down, putting my ego to the side and working on building a relationship with her. Looking at who does she have a relationship with? Is that someone that I need to have a relationship with too? Um... Uh, with that being said, you do need to know the high performers. You need to know who the decision makers are. So one particular thing I really wanted to talk about this with your relationship needs is the difference between mentors and sponsors, aka advocates. There was an article that I was reading about how Black women don't need more mentors. We need sponsors. We need people. And when... 
let me just share what a sponsor is, okay? A sponsor is someone that is advocating for you when you are not in the room. That is someone that is saying, hey, Letitia is really crushing it right now. And yeah, you guys need to pay attention attention to her. She is a, you know, shining star on the team. She is a, <laughs> you know, she is a high performer. She is someone that we need to really make sure we um, look out for. These, I promise y'all these conversations are being had. That is someone that is in a decision-making authority, someone that is in leadership that can actually push the needle forward when it comes to your success. They typically are in a senior level, and that's there's someone that's going to be invested in your career. They will also open you up to their own network within the company. Um, they are gonna be championing for you even when you not when you don't know it but they're going to be using their authority and their reputation. So you are essentially an extension of them. You'd be surprised at how many people will look out or will promote a person off the strength of one particular person that has um, that type of authority. Now, that's someone that might be at a partner level or a C-suite level, depending on the size and nature of the company that you work for. But you do need sponsors. If you don't have sponsors, make that a goal for 2020 is to get some sponsors at work. Now let's talk about mentors. Mentors. Mentors are someone that will help to make your job easier. They might give you training. They might give you suggestions on, hey, here's how you can navigate this particular situation. Here's how you can navigate this particular relationship. They may give you feedback on your development. They may offer insight on how to, you know, um, kind of maneuver in corporate um, and they may kind of share their unwritten rules on how to get ahead, but they may not be someone that is really vouching for you. Understand that there is a difference. Mentors mentor you, sponsors advocate for you. All right. So it's good to have mentors and understand that you won't go to your mentors and your sponsors For the same thing, when you're talking to your sponsors, you need to be really strategic in the information that you're sharing. You need to be sharing your wins. You need to be sharing your goals. You need to be sharing, you know, or asking them questions about what it's going to take for you to really grow at the company, right? Um, With your mentors, that could be if you want to talk to them about certain challenges that you're having. That is what you could go to your mentor for. I mean, you could still go to them for the other things, but... Just be strategic in how and what information you're sharing. So um, if you're not sure in terms of who to build relationships with, start there. Mentors, sponsors, the high performers on the team. And then also like the people that maybe have been at the team for or been on the team or at the company for a while. Maybe they're just kind of cruising to retirement or they're complacent with, you know, where they are, but they have the relationships. And they know what they're doing at work. (laughs) Someone that can help you. um, That could be a good relationship. And that could be a great mentor uh, for you. Um, Think about how you can add value as well to these people. Understand what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. So when I uh, worked in corporate, I was on the recruiting uh, team. I was the youngest one on the team of eight. And um, the oldest actually became like one of my closest friends. I love her so, so much. She's just one of the most amazing people I've ever met. She has to be in her 60s. Um, Super, super sweet. She had been with the company for over 20 years. Literally like she's, (laughs) I don't want to compare my age to how long she's been there, but um, she definitely has some years on me. Wonderful, amazing person. And we built an alliance. She knew the who to build relationships with. She knew how she knew how to play the politics game. She wasn't in a decision making role, but she was able to help me navigate some issues that I could not have gotten through without her. Now, being that there is an age difference when it came to us rolling out new HR software or when we uh, or went through a whole ATS applicant tracking system implementation, I was that person that would stay on the phone with her late night you know, guiding her and helping her through um, how to manage the system. So think about how you can add value to these folks. Maybe there are people on your team 
that are high performers. They're really good at public speaking, but maybe the organization, the documentation part is a little hard. Chip in and help um, with that if, if you can. Figure out how you can add value. And again, that's going to be paying attention to their strengths and their weaknesses. Number three, I want to make sure I get through these, you know, and not go um, super, super long today. But I know this is the first episode of the year. So I had a lot of information I wanted to share um, with you all. Number three is actually schedule like time with these people. And I mean FaceTime with these people. I'm a millennial. <laughs> uh, so I love to just like, hey, let me shoot you a quick I am. Do we need to meet in person? Like, do I have to actually like get up from my desk? Like, you know, why can't I just like I am you from my couch at home? <laughs> but it is important to have FaceTime. Don't forget, you can never, ever forget the quality of building relationships with someone when you meet them in person. It's also important for people to understand how you respond and communicate. Uh, I'll be honest, when I first started in corporate, I realized there were some folks that did not look like me that never, ever, ever truly had close interactions with people that look like me. I hope that y'all caught what I was saying there. And so... With that being said, you know, and, you, and I know you guys have, have witnessed this even in college, right? But even in corporate, we all just grow up so differently. We are around so many different types of people. And, you know, depending on the person, um, depending on the coworker, they may have not had a lot of interactions with someone um, that is, um, you know, a person of color. So... Keep that in mind, you know, what their uh, assumptions or thoughts of us could be from what they see in media, TV, and, you know, movies. So it is important to let people see you, to see you for who you are. Uh, I had a coworker um, that I love, 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 <laughs> and uh, she... Uh, is a black woman and she was so feisty. Oh my goodness. She's so feisty. And I, I love it now, but I used to think that she hated me. And I'm going to be honest, y'all. Like I used to think that she, it hated me. Uh, and then once we started to spend more time together and we were working at some of the same conferences, I was like, you know what? Like, this is just how she is with everyone. Like she is truly herself. And so when, all I'm saying here is let people see you for who you are. Let people warm up to you um, so that they um, will be able to build that trust. When it comes to scheduling time with people, you got to be present. Be present and really get to know people for who they are, even outside of work. It is okay to ask people about their family, if they have children, if they have pets. People love talking about their pets. Uh, asking people about their hobbies, like what do they enjoy outside of work? What type, you know, what do they do for fun? Um, do they, you know, do they cook? Do they go out to eat? What are their favorite restaurants? I mean, find ways and pockets to kind of pull information out of people and get to know them and be mindful of that. I used to keep a little notebook with me everywhere that I went whether it is me meeting with someone, you know, meeting with those those decision makers for the first time. It is hard to keep up with names, y'all. I'll be honest. Like, it is really hard to keep up with names. So there was one particular partner that everyone said, oh, my gosh, he is so hard to work with. He's so hard to deal with. And he's rude. And when I tell y'all, he's an older white man. Um we had the best relationship. Like, he is my homie. He is someone that advocated for me. And he just did not care. <laughs> he was at that level where it was like, look, y'all, y'all are not about to fire me. I have all this control, have all this power. Like, you cannot check me. And I love that energy. <laughs> we had a really great relationship. And that's because I took the time to get to know him. I asked him about his family. I asked him about his hobbies. And he didn't know this, but when I would step away from our conversation, maybe I would run out in the hall or run to the bathroom. I might, you know, go somewhere in private and I would jot these little notes down. These are his daughter's names. This is where they work. This is what they do. If they're in school, this is what they're doing. This is his wife's name. Jotting down that information. So when I, next time I saw, oh, how's your girls? How's your wife? You know, 
And over time, we were able to build that relationship. Other thing I want to say here is attending events, attending those happy hours. I know we hate, hate having to spend time with people that we see literally all day, every day. So those dinners and happy hours, y'all, we have to go. We have to go. Have you ever been in a performance review and they'll say, well, we don't really know you or your coworkers. They don't really, you know, feel like you don't like them. Trust me, y'all, that sometimes that feedback can be rude and biased, but I'm telling you guys like that, you can go to the happy hour. That's all I'm saying. Get there early. Get there early so you can leave early, okay? But you have to attend these team events. Join committees too. Find ways to kind of get to know your coworkers outside of that working, you know, nine to five uh, you know, work. So joining committees, volunteering, you know, there's always like the social committees, um, join those committees. So people can one, see you, how you are, understand how you are operate even outside of that work that, you know, maybe a little bit more buttoned up work environment. That is a great way to build those relationships where it's not forced, but I would encourage you to Really be intentional about that FaceTime, coffees, lunches, you know, maybe if you can't because your team is in a different country or across, you know, different coasts, just scheduling those recurring checkpoints is going to be important. Number four is over communicate. Uh, what I mean by this is constantly just emailing. And again, this is what uh, a manager told me was over communicate so people don't have time to make assumptions or generalizations about your work. So like, let's say you're working on a project with someone. They don't know where you stand at work. Maybe you guys don't have, where you stand on your progress. Maybe you guys don't have like a solidified, hey, here's how we're going to keep each other updated on where we are. Send them a quick note and let them know. Do it in advance, all right? Maybe you aren't planning to go into the office the next day and Again, I get it. Like if you're in an environment where it is a very flex work, you know, arrangement, people don't really trip like that. But trust me, they are still watching. OK, <laughs> they're still watching. So um, just in a quick note, hey, I'm going to be working from home tomorrow. Just wanted to let you know something at just like that. Just don't give people any room or space to make any assumptions about your work and your work performance. I think I can leave that there. I personally think that over communication is key for that. Always keeping the right people in the loop of what it is that you have going on is important. Number five, say thank you. That sounds so simple, but showing appreciation goes such a long way. Recognizing your coworkers if they have done something positive, if they've been helpful, you know, if they really kind of stuck, you know, their what is it, their hand out, their foot out for you, or whatever it is, like actually take the time to say thank you. Even if it's the first time that person has done that, or you know, maybe you have been helping that person out for a long time and they never helped you out. And now they're finally helping you helping you out and you're like, okay, about time. Like, whatever it may be, just say thank you. Even your boss. Um, people want to feel appreciated. And, and, and be genuine about complimenting people when they do something well. This is going to be a great way to build relationships. Number six is all about positivity. Focus on being positive. Focus on being positive. People don't want to be around a negative Nancy. And with that being said, too, you don't want to be around a negative Nancy. So stay away from those negative folks, which leads me into the next thing, gossiping. Do not gossip at work, guys. Please find someone else. <laughs> to talk to outside of work. I'm telling you, it. don't gossip at work. Find a friend, maybe your significant other, your therapist, get a career coach, but be really mindful about of the type of information you're sharing with certain people. Now, I was always the type to listen to the gossip. <laughs> I may not agree, I may not disagree, I may listen and do what I want, but that's about it. But y'all know it's easy to get caught up in that gossip. I don't really feel good after gossiping. I don't know about you all, but like gossiping makes me feel really low. It brings my energy down. 
it gives me this, it just, I never feel good after having a conversation about gossip. Um, so I would say, you know, just be mindful of that. And uh, some people are naturally just negative people as well. Be as positive as you can to those. Um, and then the last thing, number seven, when it comes to these relationships, set boundaries, manage your boundaries. If this happens, or with managing boundaries, that means like don't allow your coworkers to, just depends on the nature of the relationship. Maybe they shouldn't be texting you after hours, right? Or there should not be an expectation where they email you after hours that you're going to get back to them, you know, before you go to bed. Like, don't be that person that's like always available 24-7. You have to manage your boundaries one so that people can't run over you. Um, and that also so you can make sure you're taking time to restore your energy while you're not at work. So that's all that I'm saying there is is managing those those boundaries. Maybe if you're not responding to someone's email fast enough, right? Like maybe you have a coworker that emails you at eight o'clock in the morning. You don't get back to them. They're emailing you at 10 a.m. Like, hey, just following up. You're like, okay, son, it's been like two hours. So like, give me some time. You know what I'm saying? Manage those boundaries. And that's all about a gaining respect. Do it assertively, of course, do it in a positive manner. Like, but don't be negative about it. But definitely manage those boundaries so that you can get the respect that you deserve. So um, those are the tips that I have. I hope this was helpful. Let me just run through uh, those seven things again. Number one is people skills. <laughs> you got to have good people skills. Learn how to communicate. Learn how to get to know people. That small talk is a good start. Um, being observant. Thinking about who will be your advocates for 2020 a.k.a. your sponsors, who will be your mentors. Number two, identify your relationship needs. Who do you need to build relationships with? What do you need from them? And then what do they need from you? How can you add value there? Number three, schedule time with people. Don't forget about FaceTime. Don't underestimate the value of FaceTime. Number four, over-communicate. Always be, always be communicative about what you have going on, your progress, um, things of that nature. Again, don't give folks too much room and space to make assumptions that can negatively impact uh, your performance um, or your brand. Number five, say thank you. It goes a very long way. Number six, being positive, avoiding gossip as much as possible, avoiding negativity, finding people outside of work that you can vent to. And then number seven is managing your boundaries. That will get, make sure that you are getting respect. So I hope these are, are helpful. Um, hit me up. I want to know like what your themes are for the year. Like I said, my theme is discipline, all about discipline, discipline, discipline in 2020. Um, so yeah, uh, I will be talking to you guys uh, very soon. Bye. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin for Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.